I'm uh, Valentino Gantz. I'm a postdoc in Ethan Beer's lab. And in my, during my PhD project, I've been working on studying the evolution in different fly species. And in order to um, generate and identify mutations in uh, species different from Drosophila melanogaster, uh, I was faced with a problem that it is hard to like generate and keep mutation that are recessive in such flies. And since we do not have like all the uh, tricks and tools that we have in Drosophila, I wanted to uh, find a way to um, generate mutations and I isolate them in a faster and uh, more efficient way. This is why um, we came up with the idea of having uh, some sort of mutations that were able to convert the opposite chromosome, therefore um, transforming a recessive mutation to a dominant one or a heterozygous to a homozygous mutation. So we decided to test the mutagenic chain reaction or MCR in the fruit fly first, targeting the gene yellow. And um, a mutation done with the MCR on the gene yellow would in theory when uh, heterozygous, so you have only one bad copy and one uh, good copy or uh, wild type allele, would look exactly like the wild type. But if the mutagenic chain reaction would work, therefore would uh, convert the normal allele to the yellow condition um, of the MCR mutation, and therefore the fly would be homozygous and look yellow. Once I built this construct and once was put in the flies, I. Uh, was waiting on December 18 for like the first club flies to come out and uh, if it was due to like regular Mendelian genetics these flies were uh, heterozygous so they would in theory have looked like absolutely uh, normal like wild type looking but um, when I came into the lab really early because I really wanted to catch the first flies to come out uh, the first fly came out at about 8 a.m. and it was completely yellow and you know a few hours later all the flies that came out were all yellow. And that's um, where we uh, first saw that this concept was working. Hi, I'm Ethan Beer. Valentino Gantz did um, that pioneering work that he described in my lab. And um, in addition to what Valentino talked about, that is initiating genetic entry into pioneer organisms, which in many ways can be conceived of as the untapped gold of the genomic era, there are additional uh, applications of what we're referring to now more broadly as active genetics. One of the most obvious are gene drives. And so MCRs um, are capable of being gene drives, that is to spread themselves and uh, gene cassettes that might be carried on them through a, through a population. And as one example, we have been collaborating with Tony James at uh, the University of California at Irvine. Uh, Valentino made uh, an MCR that works in the mosquitoes and the James lab showed that it, it propagates the gene cassettes that are uh, anti-malarial gene packages uh, with over 99% um, efficiency. So that's one example. Uh, <clears throat> with regard to MCRs, there's a little bit of a concern that they can spread so rapidly that there are things that need to be done to constrain them. One way of doing it is what we call trans-complementing MCRs, where the independent components of the MCR, the Cas9 and the GRNAs, are separated. That allows one to grow them up during husbandry separately and then cross them later. Another is an eraser, an element for reversing the autocatalytic chain reaction, which cuts out the MCR and replaces itself in the middle of where the MCR was. And the big deal about the eraser is that it doesn't carry its own source of Cas9. So once the eraser is in the genome, it no longer can create any kind of mutagenic effect. A related element is called a chaser. It too lacks a source of Cas9, but instead of targeting the MCR, it targets a separate site in the genome, and it can do things like correct off-target effects, spread gene edits, and also be adapted to be an eraser-like element by targeting the, the Cas9 for mutagenesis. The idea of the chaser has been sort of consolidated into a cloning vector idea called copycats. These copycat vectors can accelerate genetics in model organisms, uh, bypassing the uh, constraints of Mendelian genetics. In addition, MCRs can be used for human therapy of various kinds, HIV, cancer therapy, although in these cases the idea is to spread the gene cassette throughout the cells in the human body, which will be something in the future, not as immediate as the applications, for example, of gene drives to vector-borne diseases. So these are the topics that are in our review, um, the dawn of active genetics. I hope you enjoy it.